Here we go. So good evening, good night, good afternoon, and good morning, although I don't think that we have somebody from the States around the table uh, here anyway. Good day to all people joining in also from the recording. Um, so what welcome everybody so this is uh today's uh, march 16th um google summer of code office hours so we presented in the previous sessions all the projects we're now in running mode for the preparation i have a couple of general an announcements or tips to give uh, and then we'll open up uh, for questions. Let's see uh, if we can uh, answer them. Oh, we have somebody from the States uh, joining. So good morning, Jake. Hello, Jean-Marc. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Or good evening, well, actually. <laughs> or even good night, <laughs> because some are in the middle of the night. So here, let's let's go. So first, um, we have uh, so we're full steam preparing, and we're full in the um, proposal preparation phase. It's running good. A lot of very positive activity on the various channels, and uh, I'm happy to share that we have about uh, sixteen, or the last count was. 16 drafts uh, being proposed, uh, very good work. There's only one uh, where I have a question mark about it. I think he started to put a foot in the door and uh, he's probably still working or thinking of things, but there, there is no substance uh, in the proposal. All others are good. There is also good interaction uh, good reviews by mentors, but also from other participants. And what I like and is very positive, there are also positive reviews and constructive reviews from peers, so other people that are proposing um, uh, projects or to contribute uh, to projects. So uh, very good. I've been reading as much uh, as I can. Um, and I'm requesting again to mentors and whoever in the community, uh, it's important to help the candidates uh, to verify that their ideas are correctly uh, formulated, are easy to read, are correct, and uh, to give them tips for the best presentation uh, for the selection. Uh, I have uh, two general recommendations. So I will do them here and I will not repeat it in all the documents that I, I review. Uh, one important tip when writing technical documents uh, is write short sentences. Um, it makes it much, much easy to read and skim over the text. Uh, I know that you have a lot of ideas that you would like to push through and the ideas flow one after the other. Um, a good way to check is if your sentence is longer than 80 character, uh, start looking into how can you convey a meaningful uh, idea while making shorter sentences. So several words are not always necessary and so, so on. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you want to have uh, some, some advice on, on that one. Short phrase, can I say it more impactful? Some sentences are sometimes three or four time, uh, four, uh, three or four lines long and I'm lost when I, I'm reading them. Uh, another general tip, uh, so uh, I've seen at different le level of maturity, good description of the different phases uh, of the project, how people are envisioning it. And I know it's a very early stage. It's not always uh, easy. It's an important exercise. 
because it shows uh, that you thought it over, that you you know what what you're talking about, and uh, that you're serious. A good way to improve that, and, and which I would like to to see, uh, is try to uh, estimate the effort. So there's one important caveat there, and you can write it, say, based on your current knowledge of the project. I am either guessing or I believe that this particular part will take me that many hours to code, to think about, to document, to test. This will allow doing that exercise on a spreadsheet or a piece of paper will help you to corroborate if your overview picture of the, the, the project is sound. So currently most of the, the, the candidates have, have used a top-down approach saying, well, this is what I need to do and this is how I will split the work and this, this will fit. Uh, does it match reality? The, 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 what, what's the data behind it? Another approach to verify this is to go bottom up to describe all the different tasks that need to be done and you, you, you estimate them, you add them up and see, well, does it match? Didn't I overestimate uh, my ability uh, to do that much work uh, in uh, 127, or I don't remember the exact number, the number of hours uh, that's estimated. Um, and this is a good way. And showing that in your, your proposal shows that you have thought in detail of what you plan to do. Now, I agree, it's a very difficult thing to do based on what you know now. And this is part of the game. And professionally, you will also have that difficulty. And so you iterate on those estimations. And it's an important skill to learn professionally. And well, on open source, well, generally, you don't count the other the hours that you're spending on it. So but here in this particular case, it shows that you know what you're talking about. Uh, this were the general uh, comments uh, that I wanted to share. I'm first going to ask if mentors have uh, that are here around the table have something to add or comments that they want to share uh, with the audience at this stage uh, of Google Summer of Code. No, not really. Uh, your advice to make small sentences uh, is very good. It's true that uh, it's hard to um, uh, finish a sentence and uh, it's hard when you finish a sentence and forget what the beginning was, <laughs> even for non-native speakers. And I also would say um, if we uh, put a comment on the document saying, um, can you please um, uh, clarify that even though it, it, even if you respond i clarify that later on the document later is probably too late uh, if we ask some clarification on the sentence it may be because the sentence itself uh, is not clear enough even if you provide more details later on the document that's very, uh, so, very, yeah. very, very good comment. And I'll, I'll add an additional detail to that. Uh, I've seen that some of the authors uh, answer to the comment in the comments and sometimes forget to put it in the main text. So it's a good idea to clarify the question or doubt that the reader had but it's not a one-to-one -one conversation. It's a, a conversation to the whole, uh, to the whole audience. So don't forget to the signals or the questions that the mentor uh, is is giving you are hints that things are unclear or there are doubts. 
and they should be in the document. Very, very good point and very good uh, advice, Adrian. Something else, could somebody help me to put the attendees in and uh, um, add a few notes of what we're talking about? Because I, I have a hard problem concentrating on uh, their, okay, think people are joining there. Thank you for, for the help. Are there other comments or things that are good, could be improved? While people are gathering their ideas, uh, I like very much the, sorry, I like very much the quality and also uh, the engagement of the people that have been uh, writing. Uh, somebody wanted to add something, yeah. Adrian? I, I wanted to ask, to, to say, um, I, I know that you may be tempted to say that you will uh, support the code that you will implement during the project and it comes from a good sentiment and we would like you to stay in the community and 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 keep on the project but we also know that the um, your interest may shift or your uh, involvement in in future uh, will change uh, because you are studying or you will change jobs and and some things like that so saying in the proposal that you will be uh, supporting the code for years is um, might not might come from a good sentiment, but is not it, it, it won't uh, give you extra points. Uh, it, it, it's not something that uh, I personally see as a, something I expect you uh, I expect from you. I expect from you to have a good involvement during the project, during this year JSOC, but I'm not expecting you to, and I'm not forcing you to keep on the project for years to come. So you don't need to mention that, or at least for me, it's a personal uh, taste, maybe not taste, but personal sentiment on, on that. And um, I don't get, I, I don't use that against your proposal and I don't use that for your proposal, to promote your proposal over others uh, either. So, um, because I know that um, uh, the, your, your center of interest will change, uh, it's it's totally normal. And uh, so uh, you, it's something that you, you can remove or you can not uh, or put in your proposal. I'll, I'll nuance that a little bit. I, I fully support your point of view because we're, we have the experience. We know how life goes. Uh, but uh, thinking about how you will use what you have learned and how you will give back in open source, uh, in a Jenkins community or... Uh, uh, other ideas or or professionally uh, there are several ideas so uh, promising that you will maintain the plugin until you die well okay but there are other things in other intelligent things that you can answer uh, to the question definitely I, li I like the, the the way you you say that you uh, can Say what you expect to learn from JSOC. Uh, that that to me is a very is the purpose of JSOC project for you to learn something for the community Jenkins community here to gain something from your uh, from your work, but also you yeah we expect you to learn something. So mentioning that in your proposal, so also it. For, for mentors, it helps at least me to see where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And that will also help to see how our objectives match and how I can, as a mentor, help you getting there. Uh, yeah. So it, it's sure. something that it would be very good to see, for sure. Very, Thank you, Jean. Very good point. I, I think we're 100% in line. So this said, uh, general comments, uh, I want to have enough time and we can go a little bit over, over time. So are there 
other questions from the audience, generally or technically? Mukul, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I have a question regarding a specific project. So would it be appropriate to ask it here? Go ahead, it's an office hours. So yeah, go so, ahead. Uh, uh, I will be referencing the Jenkins Docker uh, Quick Start Examples project. So uh, I have two questions here. The uh, first question is that uh, in the project ideas uh, web page, it's uh, written that uh, we could have a set of Docker Compose files representing various types of Jenkins instances. And in parentheses, uh, it's written simple Docker, comma, Kubernetes. So uh, I do understand uh, what uh, we are doing here that uh, we are condensing all the commands into a Docker Compose file, which is in turn uh, creating a Jenkins instance for us. So the uh, question I have here is that what my interpretation is that I have to do something similar uh, on a Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, but I am a little confused about that. So I just wanted some more clarification on that. Okay. Is there somebody who wants to answer? I have an answer for that. I go ahead. So um, I've, I've read and also made comments uh, on that uh, about Kubernetes or not. First thing, is it is your proposal. So if you believe, if you have well understood the goals uh, of the problem we want to solve and uh, that you believe and you have a good idea how to do it in the allocated time with this or that technology, go ahead uh, and, and convince us. Uh, by providing uh, data and, and explanations uh, how to do that. Now, my point of view about that is be cautious with Kubernetes. So the purpose of that project is to provide a quick start. Uh, that means in, in the, the proposal could, for instance, time this quick start and saying, between the interest, oh, I want to know what it is. And to have an actual system running, you could define it and say, this is the goal I want to achieve. I want that within 10 minutes, the person can see the benefits and experiment by himself. So, so well, I, I'm saying 15 minutes, but here, this is the principle of quick start. Uh, and in count in their, uh, the, the time required to, um, uh, uh, to set up the prerequisite and so, but go there. My fear is that Kubernetes, you will bring a huge amount of dependencies, things that can go wrong. I don't believe that running a Kubernetes uh, on, uh, on the local machine, for Jenkins is something feasible, unless you're very rich and you have a super machine. So uh, what's the name again of the, the uh, uh, Minikube uh, or, or Rancher or these kind of, well, though Rancher is, is, uh, is uh, doing better. I forgot the names of, of that. There might be solution, yeah, uh, uh, K3 day, D, thank you. So, state that you want to go there and, and be sure that this will run on most machines. Uh, so it, is my doubt correctly conveyed? <laughs> uh, um, it's not because it's written in the proposal that it absolutely needs to be uh, described or implemented. I personally don't believe that uh, Kubernetes is a good idea for a quick start. Okay, so uh, what my understanding uh, till now is that uh, 
it's not necessary for me to add the Kubernetes content to the uh, proposal. And uh, what my interpretation of the project is that basically there are a lot of commands in the Docker part of the Jenkins documentation. I have to condense them down into a Docker compose file, uh, which would be running on a Gitpod instance. So that could be run uh, by just clicking a link and then I can configure the dot gitpod file so that when the workspace opens, then the Docker compose up command runs automatically. So the user just has to uh, basically type in in the browser localhost 8080 or we can automate yeah. that as well. Yeah. And then You're what you, what you're telling don't don't explain all the the, the project because I'd like to, lead, to let also some some others what you're saying there is music to my ear so you're on the right stuff and and try also to describe the 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 requirements of of the thing and and think what is what means quick start how can we measure that we achieve that goal and you can poke to the people that are interested in there around documentation, or you you can you can ask there, uh, what would they uh, like to to have to have there? Okay, it, does that answer your doubt, Satak? Uh, yes, that uh, answers my doubt. And uh, another question I had, uh, it basically seems to have been solved, but uh, I'll just ask to confirm it. Uh, in the uh, project ideas uh, web page, there is another line that uh, provide examples, sample code, and documentation on how the local Jenkins instance would be created. So uh, my question is that in the examples, uh, do I have to give examples of like how the uh, jobs would be created and the remote triggers would be like uh, uh, the triggers would be activated remotely or the user scope would be like uh, we would be uh, like dealing with the user of authorization stuff so do i have okay. to include that or do i have to include something like uh, okay i'm using a jenkins uh, instance and uh, with that i'm using a java application so this right. is how jenkins can be used the Java application. Yeah, here, what's written in in the project idea is not a rule. It is it is not a contract from uh, from a customer that and you need to implement that. No, not at all. It's just an idea that somebody wrote an evening uh, just before dinner, and uh, well, this could be a nice thing that I'm 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 dreaming of. So. You have to build it. You you can build it and say, "Well, I I, I would go in that direction," uh, or 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 the. So, uh, if you have other ideas to implement it, and that and, and that you understood the goals, and this is what I personally would like to see. Did you understand the goals? Do you have sound ideas? Uh, do you have creativity? uh in in do you have the knowledge uh to to solve the problem this is what we're we're looking for okay yes yes i'm i'm going to do a general uh, comment here uh because i i'm i try to keep the clock under my i i see they're very interesting questions and i will try to cover as many as we can i just want to say that if there are topics around a project, and I will try to throw uh, that on the table, we can arrange per project topics, if interested. So uh, if you're interested and have questions, we can do an interactive session per project. Right? It depends on the availability of the mentors and, uh, and so on, but it will be more efficient than going very detailed in one single project. So uh, I, I will think on how we can uh, organize uh, that. 
other questions that can be answered? Well, we'll go a little bit overboard, but there are important questions. I thank you, Sasak, to have asked uh, your question. Uh, do I need to check in the... Um, okay, 3TD. So I see Mukul has a question. Um, so I'm, I'm reading it. So uh, uh, Mukund, no, Mukul, Mukul Kumar, yeah? Okay, I, I'm sorry for uh, barely pronouncing. Do you hear me? Is your mic working? I don't hear you. Or you're super shy. Hello. Jo mm -hmm. Just joking. Now I hear you. Okay, can you ask mm -hmm. your question? Uh, so my question is that it is mentioned there uh, that the expected outcome will be uh, shared by the mentors. So uh, what is the expected outcome for this uh, building apps with Jenkins? Like half of the project uh, is prototyped uh, by some guy. Uh, so what will be the expected outcome? What I have to do uh, for this GSOC period? That's my question. Before giving the word to Bruno, I'm going to, to shortcut this and say, propose your outcome. We want you to come and say, well, this is what, what I would uh, do. Come with your ideas, come forward uh, with them. So, but this is a general idea. So uh, uh, show that you can, you can drive, you can, you can create uh, a thing. So this is general comment. But here, let's let's start answering then. Bruno, what did you have in your mind when you wrote that? Mm -hmm. I should have written the expected outcome. You're right, Mukul. But Jean-Marc is right too. Uh, just propose something and we'll see. The thing is, um, um, what I propose for the timing is something that does work, but it's just a proof of concept. We could do much, much better. That's something that works on lots of various uh, architectures or computers, Mac, Lin uh, Linux, Windows, whatever, mm -hmm. but it's not production grade. So I'd like something that works better and who could be tested on other platforms too, because it's not because it works for me on various machines that it will work for anybody. What I'd like is something that works out of the box just for anybody, even on a Chromebook, for example, why not? So that's my goal, having something that works out of the box with um, um, correctly written documentation, which is not the case for the time being, there even isn't a blog post about that yet. So why not documentation and a set of files that do work for just about everybody? That's my goal. But if you have another one, please propose cool. something and we'll see. Yeah. Oh, cool. Does that answer your question or? Uh, yes, and uh, I have another question. Uh, for this, we have to like uh, use uh, like Google Play services. Uh, like we have to deploy app on our Google Play. So uh, we require credits, uh, $25 credit for that. So will this be provided by Jenkins itself or we, we have to manage that on our own? I already have a Google Play Store account that I could share with you, for example. So that's not a problem. You won't have to pay anything. Uh, we'll use my account if you want to go that far. And if you want, if you don't want to go that far, if you are satisfied with just making a release on GitHub, that's perfectly fine too. Um, the um, push to Google Play Store is not that difficult. And even if you propose something around that, there are already Gradle plugins that do the job and so on. So that's not something really major. If we don't go up to that, that's not a problem for me. The most important part is much more on the left of the CI, CD. I mean, security, static analysis, uh, you know, those kind of things. They have to be very on the left of the process. So that's what's major. That's what's really important for me. Pushing to Google Play Store, it's a nice bonus, but it's already working. If you have some ideas about that fine and we'll use my account but if not that's not a problem for me thank you is that okay yes yes thank you okay thank you cool <laughs> good questions are there other questions yeah um uh, hi 
I'm Smith. Uh, so I had a question regarding uh, uh, Jenkins configuration as code. So yes. like I've highlighted some challenges in uh, creating a drift detector. So like, uh, uh, like uh, what do we expect from proposal now? Like I would like to know. Ooh, that's that. I, I fear I don't understand your, your question. You need to be yeah. more specific. Sure. What so, don't uh, you understand or? Sure. So basically the drip detector is uh, basically comparing two configurations and detecting the delta between the two configurations. Right? Yes. Uh, so ideally we would uh, take the real time configuration from the Jenkins instance and compare it with the supplied one and then detect the delta and uh, output it to the user. So here uh, we, uh, so real configurations has lots of basic elements as well. Be, uh, like basic key value pairs as well and uh, lots of default values as well. So it's not possible to compare those two and detect the drift. Uh, there could be a drift because of manual changes as well. So to detect that we should know what uh, the desired state should look like actually uh, along with basic values. So uh, the short answer is I don't know. And this is part of the project to, to, to see how it could be done and what are the difficulties and how we could um, solve uh, these difficulties. So the, the first thing is, and I hear from your question that you have a good grip of that, is that you describe uh, the the problem there. Hold on, the, the, I'm going to close the door. Oop. Oops, uh, sorry about that. Um, I'm disturbed. So uh, try to formulate exactly, and, and this you already did. What is the problem you try, we trying to solve? What is the scenario? Try to reproduce. Uh, that scenario and try to describe it. Second thing is uh, discover or state, these will be the problems that will be, need to be explored and solved. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, mentioning uh, uh, them uh, uh, is already a good start. This is a project that I think I, I uh, uh, a project idea that I created two years ago and, and didn't revisit it recently. So, uh, and I had discussions with you or somebody else, the interesting mm -hmm. things that have been discovered. It, it's not simple. So I don't know. It doesn't answer your question, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, this will be solving, this will be included in the project scope, right? Yes, yes, yes. So what it, it would really reassure me uh, to see, oh, okay, he tried it, he has ideas, he spotted already where it will turn out. This is not as simple as we thought. Mm -hmm. And just quote, well, this could be one way to solve it, or this could be another way. Uh, uh, exploring, experimenting, is part of Google Summer of Code and is a valid scope for a project. Uh, for, for me, uh, a, a valid uh, uh, Google Summer of Code project could be between brackets, a failure, meaning we did not achieve what we expected or we had to change the plan or the scope. This is perfect, perfectly okay. What I want, to, what we want to see is, and and where we're going to judge uh, at the end, is, uh, did you actually work uh, on it? Did you come with novel ideas? Did you learn the techniques and and the spirit of open source in sharing? Did you do a, a correct discovery and engineering uh, a project? The, the to rephrase it, it's the, the way that's more important than the destination uh, in here. Now, reaching the destination is definitely a plus point, very motivating and important. 
But uh, so it's perfectly okay. And we had other examples where the project at the end said, well, okay, I don't think that this turns out to be a good solution, but this is what we learned from it. Does that Pardon. help you a little bit? Yeah. And uh, there is also another problem, which I also highlighted, like uh, removing the uh, nodes doesn't essentially mean we are removing the uh, configuration from the Jenkins. Uh, so any yeah, yeah, well, that... but this is one of the, the, the not drawbacks, but one of the current uh, um, weaknesses uh, of it is that adding, changing works, removing does not work well, especially with all the uh, 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 all the the parameters or nodes or or instances or or, not, uh, the, or objects configuration uh, objects, and and this this could be a perfect point in saying well uh, the drift doesn't work for that, but this is how we could mm. solve it by improving Google's uh, 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 Jenkins configuration as code and so on. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And also, uh, yeah. is there any update on mentor? Like last time you said, uh, you, because of uh, there is a lot on your plate, you will not mentor this project. Is that yeah? Um, well, I'm I'm looking for for mentors in in uh, that that's true. Uh, I need to be honest. There, I don't have an update uh, on that particular question, and it's still a risk. I need to be honest uh, there, Smith. Cool. And there is another mentor as well, like said, uh, like I yeah. don't see him active on the jitter. So will it come after once the like applications are narrowed down and we'll start working on it? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I, I need to say, uh, I had a good contact with him uh, and uh, he's based in London. No, uh, yeah, uh, in London. Uh, and but here it's two months. I didn't hear anything from him. I'm I'm going to reach out. I'm currently doing the roundup uh, of the the mentors and confirm that there will be available, or if they they withdraw uh, uh, from it. So I I, I need to be honest uh, uh, there. Uh, this is indeed a question mark and a potential risk. So uh, this last one, like, will this like affect the uh, uh, on like proposal selection? Yes. Yeah, I need I need to be. I'm I'm I, I'm I'm sorry about that, but uh, we will only take the projects that we're able to mentor correctly, and we owe that uh, to the people that will invest all their summer working. We want proper and high quality mentoring. And I prefer to say that we're not going to take this project and and may, and propose to uh, this project for next year. But I want to be very honest there with the mentors and uh, with uh, the contributors there. We will only take the projects from candidates that will achieve uh, the, the goals, but also that we provide, are able to provide all the ne necessary log logistics uh, for them to uh, achieve their, their results. But I will, I will, once the selection is done uh, in, in, um, for the good, pro good proposal, I will have a personal conversation with all of you that have been uh, to explain why and also to help how or discuss how we can move on uh, from that. This is my responsibility as um, a member of the uh, org admin uh, team. Okay. Thank you. The world is not perfect, Smith. I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry. And I see a lot of good proposal. I see a lot of good, good guys and energy here. And I know I will, dis or we will disappoint a few, but it's part of life too. You need to learn it. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, are there other questions? I'm sorry for the for that tone, but I want to be honest. It's my responsibility. Other questions, comments, doubts? Okay, I will babble a little bit to leave it uh, there. So uh, don't forget, if you want to go deeper in an interactive way uh, on some projects, uh, uh, see and reach out to the mentors that are helping or responding on Gitter and see, can we arrange a meeting where we can share screens and discuss uh, and so don't forget, there will be no one-on-one -on -one meetings. It will always be shared. So everybody can join in the discussion as mentor or interested to mentor or as contributor. We don't want to um, uh, give an advantage uh, to anybody. And it's also the way we work. Uh, uh, in uh, in open source, and these sessions will be recorded and uh, and available. Okay, I see here a Q and A question. Uh, Utsaf, I'm I'm sorry. I need to follow a training to pronounce the, the first names correctly. Uh, I see here a question. I am familiar with the skills required for the GitLab plugin modernization project, but finding difficulties to understand the project. Also, I'm not that familiar with plugin development. Can you give me some tips regarding the project? Um, I, I'm going to give some, some general tips uh, there, uh, Utsav. So, there is work involved uh, in there. And, and uh, uh, when I made a presentation in December, I used the image and I, I like my, my image uh, for there. It's Google Summer of Code is like climbing uh, a big, big mountains uh, in the Alps or Himalaya or, or real stuff. And you can only do it if you're in a, in a team where you have guides that will show you the path. But also you need to exercise, you need to train, you need to learn, you need to build your muscle so that your, your expedition will not turn into an ordeal and that people will get hurt. Uh, how do you build that muscle is uh, so, First of all, uh, the general documentation about uh, plugins is available online. I've seen that there have been some links shared uh, in the chat. There's also a very good um, video series about modernizing a plugin. Uh, so how do you improve the plugin with uh, Mark and Darren uh, that recorded some, some live sessions there. It's a good introduction to show what are the components and so on. It will just give you where the front and the tail of a plugin is and how it works. The second thing that you should have said in first is get experience on Jenkins, run your own Jenkins server, build your projects, uh, do some CI, understand the grammar, understand how it all works together, what it's the admin. So this is important. So rephrasing first, learn Jenkins then get acquainted to what plugins are and how it works. Third thing is load the plugin into your uh, IDE. Look at the tests. The tests will talk to you and will show you what are the features. Now, the, the tests use frameworks that are sometimes difficult and require, but it's an exploration that you need to do. And your friend there is the debugger. Step through uh, the, the tests, S observe what it is doing, add print lines uh, um, uh, to, uh, to the code or um, uh, change the code just to see how does the behavior change? Oh yeah, then it does that. This is how you 
learn how a piece of software works. This is a very, very important skill to know professionally, but also in open source. You learn by reading and understanding other people's code. Now I'm lecturing here, I apologize for, for, for that. But uh, the, this, I try to make it very condensed, but these are the three tips uh, that I gave uh, in December. Uh, try to find the, uh, the recording. I will, I will make sure that all these recordings are on the page that can be found. But I call that, you build your muscle, you, 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 you train so that you're in a good stand to start the expedition climbing these wonderful mountains uh, there. So uh, it, it depends how sh how uh, how you expressed your question, but it's now time to know that uh, in order to provide a good proposal. Did I answer your question, Utsav? Yeah, there I see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, Jean-Marc, there is a question from Sai Vishnu about building Android apps, so I will answer quickly. Uh, so ahead. is the idea to develop a complex Android application using Jenkins and document it, or to develop an Android application in an elegant way using CI principles? Why not the best of both worlds? <laughs> Why not develop a complex Android application and then um, do it with Jenkins in an elegant way. No, the goal is not to develop a complex Android application. Uh, we don't have time for that. My goal was to take or first an empty Android application that does almost nothing. That's what I'm proposing right now. That would be already the first step, document how to build one this way. Then the second ta um, target would be to take an existing Android application, but a native one, like for example, Termux. I've made some experiments with Termux and it does build quite well with Jenkins, nothing specific there. So that could be another step. And then a third step could be um, building an hybrid application, you know, um, with Ionic or, um, I forgot the name, but whatever. I also tried that with a Jenkins and it's not linked to Jenkins, but I had very hard time building an hybrid application because of Node.js, NPM and so on. I'm not very literate when it comes to that. So why not? But we, I don't think we would like you to spend too much time on Android. You have to know Android, but please don't build a specific application for that. We already have an empty one. We have Tamux and I could supply a hybrid one if you want to build one. But no, don't spend too much time on building a complex application just for Jenkins. That's not the goal. Thanks for the question. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, I, I went uh, uh, 20 minutes over budget on, on timing. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but these were great questions. Uh, as we're anyway over budget, I uh, will take a last question and then we'll wrap up. Last question, last drink. Should have a bell. Or last orders. Okay. So thank you very much to have joined. Oh, uh, see here. Um, I have a question related to building Jenkins on Alternative Two. Go ahead. You, you're the last okay. question. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Now I hear you. Okay. And that's uh, this particular project, building Jenkins IO or Alternative Two, say that. We are building, we have already our site on Ostruct. Decided and now we are on... Ostruct I, I... tool. Our I, already I site, uh, documentation site is on Ostruct. On, on hosted, I'm, I'm sorry, can you say it in other words? I have a problem when I'm old. Okay, I can, I can write it, I can write it. <laughs> sorry. Oh yeah, okay, good, yeah. <laughs> Uh, good. Now I have we no are clue just... how it's pronounced. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe my problem. Okay. <laughs> uh, now we are. Uh, we want our site on the Andorra. Correct. And we want to implement the Gatsby in the Andorra. Okay. 
this project says that we want to implement Gatsby and the Antura for the blogs part. Yes. So we are building our whole site on the Antura and for the blogs only, we are using the Gatsby. This is something okay. I think uh, don't seem very uh, good. I have researched a lot uh, uh, on the Antura documentations and uh, uh, Gatsby. My suggestion is what uh, we can build our site on the Gatsby and for the documentation, we can use the Antura. Okay. This may be more, uh, you know, better for the Jenkins.io site. Okay. Do you so have a question or do you want to have our op or my opinion I, on, on that? Yes, I want your opinion that uh, why we are uh, using, why we are saying that uh, we want our site only on Antura and uh, blocks on the Gatsby. You're, you're going to laugh because I'm going to say that again. Come with your own ideas. I like that. I like what you're, you're coming and say and where you question uh, the ideas. Yep. This is the principle. This is the purpose. This is what we want to teach you to do. You're All not right. here to do what the boss asks you to do and just shut up and type it. No, you're here to create. You're here to, to wow, I'll, I'll stop getting excited on that. No, this is exactly what we're looking for. Come with oh. ideas. Don't say, I don't want to do it that way. Because the question okay. will come immediately. Why? Explain. Give the arguments. Uh, uh, um, uh, share your ideas, your vision about that, and it will be discussed and it will be uh, uh, shared. Do, do you understand the difference? So if, for instance, uh, you, you feel and, and you have good ideas and say, well, we could do the blogs uh, also. Okay. For that reason, that reason, that reason. And somebody may, may come and say, uh, hey, uh, and what about this problem? And, and, and this is really the interactive open source method and philosophy is that ideas are created like in nature and, and are played around and said, and this will live, this is a good idea and let's evol make it uh, uh, evolve and, and create and better ideas will die by themselves. Yes. You get the point? Yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so I have no problem at all. And this is a general comment that I say to others. Project ideas are just ideas. They're a seed for you. And what we want to see is, are you able to take that seed and make it grow? And, and that you, you're able to garden, that as a gardener, this idea to make it to make it a good plant or well, my idea does or my my image doesn't work uh, uh, that well but this is what we saw are you going to be the right gardener for that that idea and we'll help you there okay here it's 55 uh, it's late for you guys in india and china uh, I apologize for the, the, the long time. Very, very good questions. Very good session as all the sessions uh, we had. Continue the good work. Let the, the drafts flow in and we will read them and try to uh, interact. Give us some times because we, we have another life uh, beside Google Summer of Code. Um, and and let's let's move on. Next milestone is uh, end March the 20th, uh, I believe. I'm going to check my, my notes here to be sure. Uh, so March 20th, you can start registering on the Google Summer of Code site and start uploading your uh, proposal. The door closes April 4th. April 4th, all applications need to be in final. And therefore one month uh, we will uh, start the heavy work uh, comparing the proposals. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending it. Uh, really uh, appreciate um, and uh, let's have fun together in this adventure.
Bye-bye, everybody.